Welcome to the Average Joe's Gaming Podcast with your host, Joe, and special guests, Kyle Schubert and Eknum, talking about the Lakes Area Game Fest, January 4th and 5th of 2020. Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you about Unbox and Games $500 Board Game Sweepstakes. Every month, Unbox and Game is giving away $500 worth of board games, and I'm going to go over the multiple ways you can enter, how it works, and what you can win. First, let's go over multiple ways you can enter. There are three ways you can get entries. You can sign up for one of their membership programs and get automatic entries every single month as well as other benefits such as store-wide discounts to their online store and automatic entries into their single game or game giveaways. New benefits are constantly being added as well. Or you can pick up some board game merchandise from them and get one entry for every dollar you spend. Here are a few examples of what you can get. They have shirts, pins, stickers, even drink coasters. Lastly, you can mail in entries if you want. Now let's discuss how this sweepstakes works. Each month after drawing period ends, all entries are sent to a third party sweepstakes administrator who makes sure all the entries are eligible and then randomly selects a winner. Next, Unbox and Game then notifies the winner and the winner gets a $500 gift certificate to Cool Stuff Inc, Card House, or Game Nerds. Then the winner goes on a $500 shopping spree at one of these online stores, picking up $500 worth of board games of their choice. Finally, Unboxing Game does this whole thing all over again next month. So what are you waiting for? Get your entries in today and secure your chance to win. All right, I am here with Kyle Schubert and the infamous Eknum. <laughs> All right, Kyle, why don't you start off with talking about uh, your upcoming convention? <clears throat> yeah, so thanks for having me on your podcast, first of all. My pleasure. Pumped to see you again. Yeah. Hang out with Eknum. It's a, kind of a nerdy name, but that's cool. That's <laughs> cool. That's You're cool. a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so we're, we're working on our, our second year now of the Lakes Area Game Fest. Um, we're, you know, approaching uh, publishers and, and designers and uh, game shops and all that kind of stuff to get all the sponsorship stuff going, but um, it's going to be the first weekend in January, so the 4th and 5th. Um, we got a thumbs down. What's that about? Are you not able to make it? I cannot make it this year. <laughs> Which is a bummer because last year he was uh, he was the life of the party. So. Wow! <laughs> in my opinion, in others' opinions, maybe not. But don't ask me who because I don't want to rat him out. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, in Okaboji, Iowa, which is a, a little jaunt from here, but not too bad. A couple. No, hours. it really wasn't a bad drive at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's. Yeah, January 4th and 5th. Um, right now, the tickets, we did early bird pricing, so I think it's $25 for the whole weekend. Um, and if you wait until the day of, it jumps like 10 bucks. I did not wait. So You did not? No, I already have mine. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so if for some reason we get done like early on Sunday... And I'm able to skirt out there Sunday afternoon. I'll hook you up. 
All right. I'll hook you up. All right. We'll, we'll make sure you can. Yeah, yours out. will only be $25 for one day. Oh, right. <laughs> Decent. <laughs> How late do you go on Sunday? Uh, we, we, as of right now, we're only going to five. Okay. So we, we start early on Saturday morning. I think we start at nine or 10 and then it goes. Is this the still 24 hours of gaming? Yep. Okay. Yep. A solid 24 hours. Um, yeah, we're we're really excited for this year. So last year was our first year, obviously, and we had no idea what we were doing. And I think it went pretty well. I think it did too. For us not knowing what we were doing. It was awesome. Yeah, so so that's good. Um, but our focus has always been the attendee experience. Like we just want people to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, we we don't really care too much about flashy stuff having. Uh, you know, cool events and all this kind of stuff, which is good. Right. Um, those things are good, but that's just not that's not what we want the event to be about. We, we want uh, it to be more of a, a personal engagement. We want it to be about the relationships and, and just the simplicity of gathering with friends and, and playing games. So the focus is on playing games. We're getting rid of uh, s- uh, a lot of the more scheduled things and we just want to be more available to teach games uh, to, to people. Um, so one cool thing that we're doing this year is we're developing a system to where each game in our library will have one of the uh, promoters' names on the game. Meaning, if you have never played a certain game and you want to try it, the name of the promoter that's on the box will teach that game to you. So you just have to decide what game you want to play and, and find that person and we'll we'll get it set up and, and teach you the game. So like if I wanted to play El Grande. I would love to uh, to teach you how to play El Grande. It's a phenomenal game and, and I, I think... Have you played it? No. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. He just said that because he knew that I wasn't going to be I know, there. he's really rubbing it in. He's I, rubbing I, it I'm in. sorry. Yes. He's really rubbing well, it in. Well, might, he might be able to do something later in the year. Yeah, yeah. We... we so this is something else we, we're toying around with uh, the idea of a, a retreat. We have a lot of camps in the Okaboji area uh, that aren't used for uh, a large portion of the year. And, and so that's another thing we're cooking up uh, in conjunction with the convention. Okay. Um, but we still have a lot of the same great things that we, we did last year. We're doing a lot of play-to-win stuff like we did last year. Um, we have actually bigger and better giveaways this year, which I know is... You know that's a cool thing to just be able to show up and possibly win a, a cool game. Yeah. Um, so if you if you were attending, actually it's going to be really boring and you probably don't want to come anyways. <laughs> Not a good selling point for I everybody know, else. I <laughs> I'm just trying to to ease in I'm there. I'm just trying to ease a little bit. <laughs> I can cut it out. <laughs> What, does he not like his name? No, he can't. He doesn't want his name out there for anybody to know. It's Eknum. It's Eki. Eknum. And for e- was at one point. Yeah, because that but was in never podcast, with. Right? <laughs> yep. Are you real. hiding? Are you part he of like, the he, witness protection he, program? It's, it's exactly that. Okay. Did you hear the one podcast with the uh, the weird this, yeah the weird voiceover guy? It was uh, shop local or <laughs> online, and he's like, "I typically buy online." <laughs> that was him. That was yeah. The, the, the that boy, was the, the initial Eknum appearance. That, that was, was the witness voice where that, that was, your yep, face that, blurred out. And yeah, that was the one where we had to. Uh, what we did was we record. I'd ask him a question, and then we use a voice change, record it on that, and then I'd record it on this from that, and then I'd edit it. It actually turned out pretty good. It did. And it actually awesome. was it was kind of cool. Yep. I, I enjoyed it, but I was skept- I was skeptical about getting on the podcast with my voice. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then he came on with with his wife and it was really good. In all reality, yes, I, I can be a very um, uh, what's what's this extrovert. I can yeah. be a very but I am generally an introvert. So even though I, I sometimes look like I strive attention, sure. I don't always really strive attention. I like I like being more in the background than I do in the fore. Sure. But I can have fun. And good. He is of, really part, good at having fun. Part of life good. is having fun and enjoying life. So I'm sorry. We're breaking him in slowly. Yeah. <laughs> he has not been on video yet. Nice. But, but uh, has become my 
my stage name. Yeah, that's, persona. Yeah, my that's persona. his persona. Yeah. So. All right. And, yep. and Rand was, oh, that one, that's just really weird. People are going to go, that sounds like the same voice as Edgar. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so yeah. your convention, yep. uh, Lake Erie Game Fest, yeah. is January... 4th and 5th, Saturday and Sunday. Um, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, we have... Tickets are on sale right now. They, yeah, they are. LakeSeriaGameFest.com. Um, you can go and, and uh, register right now. Get the early bird price. Like I said, it jumps up about $10 if you wait till the day of. Um, and we have limited seating. Uh, last year, we actually we hit the cap in terms of numbers. Obviously, if you were there, there were certain parts of the day where, like, there's plenty of chairs open. Like whatever. any convention. Exactly. Um, but we do we do have, you know, rules in terms of a, a cap that mm -hmm. we have to go by because of the... Uh, yeah, and I, I really think it's going to be bigger. So uh, if you are interested at all in coming and you, you think that that's going to be able to happen, I would get on and, and register early. And I thought it was a very family-friendly event. Very, very... I enjoyed it. More My kids than, had a blast. I enjoyed yeah. it more than I enjoyed bigger events. Yeah. I actually went to, to um, Geekway to the West. Geekway to the West oh. last year. Yep. Not this year, but I went there last year in 2018. And I enjoyed your guys more than I enjoyed that big one. Awesome. Just because. My wife actually said the same thing that the cool. uh, big convention was a little more overwhelming. And she had never been to a convention, so your guys' convention was the first one she'd ever been to. Wow. And uh, so she, she walked, and she's like, she was a little underwhelmed. Yeah. And uh, she's like, this is, this is not bad. <laughs> and then we went to Geekway, and she says, yeah, this is overwhelming. <laughs> she says, I would prefer something like Lakes Area. So yeah. you guys had a great setup. Yeah, it is. So the, you're, you're the, thinking bigger this year? Well, it's yeah, I think we're going to have more, uh, more attendance um, we're trying to stay in the same room. Okay. Um, because that room is so great. What is the capacity? It's seating comfortably. It's around 100 people. Okay. Um, so that's how many tickets you're selling? We're we're trying to keep around the 120 mark. Okay. Um, knowing that everybody's not going to be there at the same time. Knowing that everybody's not going to be there at the same time. Exactly. Uh but the yeah, like the room is fantastic. There's so much natural light. I mean, it, yep. it's you, you almost feel like and they're you're done outside. with the remodel. They are okay because yep. I know they were they were close to being done last year, but there yep. were still a few things here and there that they were doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they're they're as far as I know. Joe Joe had told me one of the other guys in our our group. So there's five of us that put it on uh, for the listeners. Um, but yeah, Joe Joe said that they were done with at least that part of the the building. And you're kind of the ringmaster. I am not the ringmaster. <laughs> I, I am definitely not the ringmaster. We, uh, what's really cool about the group is that, I mean, everybody jumps in with the the skills and the talents that they have, um, and and everybody does their part. So there's so. you, there's Joe. Yep, Joe, uh, Joe Weber, John Hansel, uh, Mike Tobis, and Joel Rausch. Okay. So and I, I know I played with John. Uh, I played. Uh, lanterns with him last year and then i think cool. sword crafters oh yeah so yep yep yeah they're all great guys and um just they love the hobby and love the community and and that's i mean this event like we we put the event on with our own funds you know we fork up the cash and and get it done and and it's just because we 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 love to game and we love the people that game and we really want to bring an experience that maybe is different than the other conventions he seems like an average Joe kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> seems like the same values over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. it's it's good. So um, we just we want everybody that comes to have a good time to feel included, um, and and we want playing games to be the focus. Okay. You know, some and of the you larger. said you have you have a play to win section. We do. Yep. And it's mostly provided by uh, the Envoy program, Double okay. Exposure. I don't know if you're familiar with them. I actually just became a Herald this year. Did you? So, okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to contact them for our convention next year. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's one thing I didn't really understand about the Double Exposure program sure. is, is they help out a ton. So, they do. Yep, um, they do. And then you said there's a few of your members for your group that yeah. are heralds as well? Yep, two of two of the five are, are you? heralds. I am not. Okay. I actually, I work with um, the IGA. 
Oh, okay. The Indie Game Alliance, mm -hmm. um, which is a similar program, but obviously they work with different publishers and designers. Right. Um, so yeah, so between you know between all of us, we have some you cool have resources. connections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but last year, uh, Double Exposure provided, I think, all of our Play to Win titles. This year, they won't be providing all of them, but they still will be providing a, a large chunk. We've we've had some other uh, publishers that have donated specifically for play to win so uh, i'm a big fan of the grandpa beck he uh donated our he was the only publisher that donated to our convention last year okay so he donated four games i believe it was so what grandpa beck I'm not uh, grandpa beck games uh not bears familiar. and bees um okay. mostly trick taking games uh, pirates local? what's the other what's the pirate one pirates 21 uh, it's it's a pirate card game. Okay. Um, you guys had a couple of their games last okay. year, so uh, cool. Envoy also sure. uh, does their games, but that's probably he, how I reached got. out to all the game publishers and told them what we were doing, yep. and he was the only one that sent in games. So uh, cool, very cool company. So. Well, last year, uh, most of our giveaways and raffles and stuff that we bought those games yep. <laughs> to give away, just because you know your first year, like a publisher. They're running such tight ships, anyways. Like, for for them to warrant sending free stuff, right? You know, it, it takes a little time. You know, you got to grow a little bit. And I'm actually surprised, even this year, and very grateful that uh, the the publishers that we have had have decided to support what we're doing. Do you want to so give a shout man, out we, to I the mean, publishers? Yeah, I mean, we have like GMT. We have donating stuff. Wow. We have uh, like Fantasy Flight donating some stuff. I mean, some some fairly That's awesome. larger names. Um, I actually don't have a list of every everybody uh, that has donated. So I you'll have a list down at the convention. We though. will, yeah, and we actually we have them up uh, on our website, okay. so you can see all of the sponsors thus far. And then at the event, we'll be plugging all of them. Um, and then probably for six months after our event, we'll also be plugging them. That's just part of what okay. we do. Um, so yeah, it's it's awesome. We're pumped. We have a, a good re response from both publishers as well as uh, possible attendees. And your game library that's put on by you guys. That's all our personal games that that we uh, we just compile everybody's collections. I really like the checkout system you guys had last year. Yeah, it's really really slick and it runs right through uh, tabletop events, which is the the program that we use for okay. our website. Uh, a lot of conventions use that system. Uh, but they have it integrated right into their interface. So nice. So it makes it really slick, really simple. Okay. So. And you had a board game garage sale last year as well. We did, and we're doing that again this year. Um, I think it's going to be probably a lot bigger. I think last year people people uh, showed up and they were like, "Oh, we didn't really know what it was going to be like, so we didn't really bring any games to to put in it." But how's Eknum uh, feel about that? He's I, got he's got I, plenty of games. Let's I, be honest. I enjoyed the library. It, I think they had a really good choice of games there. I think people did a really good job. I mean, you could negotiate with some of the sellers too because you could just talk to them and say, "Would you take X amount for something?" And, and yeah, they they some of them work with you. It was it was nice. Yeah, and uh, I think we might actually put up on our website. We're, we're trying to figure out how to do this, but put up on our website all of the games that are currently for sale and then people can add to that even before the event who do you go through for your website tabletop events so you want to put a list out there of all the games you have for sale yeah uh possibly that you're aware wins. of at the time because people can bring those games anybody can bring those games yep right yep. anybody can bring games to sell uh, and i think we're we're gonna try a silent auction as well this year okay. just to kind of mix it up like i said you know we're all of the the money for this uh, is prim it's primarily coming from us. So we, we try to think of fun, creative ways to, to make a little bit of that back. Mm -hmm. We just want to break even. Um, and if we do have anything left over, so this is another really cool thing about this year. Um, any profit that, because last year we had a, a little, tiny little bit of profit that uh, went back to, to us, because as of right now, we're not a uh, non-for-profit event. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday we will become that. Um, but one thing that's cool this year, 25% of the profits, just straight off the top, we're donating to local charities. Nice. Um, so between the five of us, we have a handful of charities that we're each pretty excited about. And so we're still working on 
whittling those down because we're not sure if we want to donate like one I'm saying larger in a relative term but one larger chunk to like one charity mm-hmm. or like a couple smaller chunks of money to a couple different charities right. yeah so we're, we're still figuring charities that out. are going to be the main focus of this uh portion of the profits exactly yep and that's that's all really matters anything that's left over is just going back into next year's event right we we i mean it's not that's not why we do it i think that's good i went to another con last year that they did similar thing where they actually donate all monies to a charity yep osticon yep yeah yep cool and we the reason that some of the money will go to next year is because like you know, we we're all we all have families. We all are money's always tight for for all of us, and so. Well, I think to, that's important. Is it's, it is a family convention. Yeah. But yep. you're also for the community. Definitely. And so that's where you know you're you're trying to improve next year's event. Yep. But you also want to give back to those charities that need that help. So that's, exactly. That's awesome. We just want to make it uh, less difficult for us personally, like for next year to put the money up. Because mm-hmm. when we go to reserve the hall and, and do all that right. kind of stuff. Well, it's not know, cheap. It's not. It's not. And so if we can get to a point where we don't have to worry so much personally on a personal level financially, um, that'll be great. Mm-hmm. So, But otherwise, yeah, 25%. We're, we're just going to give straight off the top to uh, local charities. And uh, we're really excited about that. Hopefully cool. hopefully the attendees are as well. Yeah, that's that's a nice thing to hear. Yeah. When any convention does that. Yeah. So. And there are a lot. I mean, there's a lot of great events and conventions that are all doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. The The board game community, uh, you know, in large is just such a, a great community and, and they're very generous. and so Very diverse. Very diverse. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> yep. So. so That's cool. Um, and you said you're not going to do a whole lot of... Uh, scheduled events so we are going to have some like scheduled uh like demos for games um you know we might i don't know if we're going to do like any tournaments this year um if last year you you uh had a a section where you did your um like games created yes like a play testing right yep um and and we are going to do that again this year okay um but we're we're reaching out actually here in sioux falls which i just recently got connected with um, there's actually a, a group of designers that yep. meet on a regular basis, um, and I, I just got introduced to them, met some of the guys, and... Uh, well, you were saying you were conversing <clears throat> with Derek, Derek Olson? Yeah, Derek Olson. Yep. Um, with uh, uh, Euryphorus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Neanderthal Games. Yes. Um, but they, they get together regularly here, and, and I'm trying to reach out to some of those people to, to come and do playtesting. Yeah, play test some of their great. designs. And we... Uh, you know, I, I'll have a couple of our, uh, wow. couple of our designs. <laughs> Eknum's trying to put a board game down his shirt. <laughs> I've never seen such a thing. Crazy. I was just kidding. I mean, it's better than a turkey and food store, so. Uh, True. So what is your company called that you do uh, <clears throat> your board games? Yeah, so I, the way my brain works, I have to be doing something. Like I have to be creating something. I have to be. Uh, I have to have a lot of things to do. I get. I get bored really easily, um, and I just. That's just my personality. So I have a lot of things going on. Um, one of the things is I love designing games. Um, I don't have a, a company necessarily, okay. um, and, and that's simply because I don't know if on a regular basis I'm going to be self-publishing or if I'm going to be pitching to But publishers. you use the Game Crafter for your prototypes. I do. Yeah, okay. the Game Crafter is awesome. The community there is awesome. And do you sell any of your games on Game Crafter? Uh, I have in the past, um, but uh, the games that I actually I, I was selling there, I took down to develop some more. Um, they were mostly from contests. Okay. Game Crafter runs awesome contests all And you're the time. working on one right now. I am working on one right now, which I'm very excited about. I brought it with me. Okay. Uh, I thought if the opportunity arose, I could maybe uh, get some people to play it or something. And this the... is the Mint Tin contest? Yeah, so they're doing a Mint Tin contest. Uh, obviously, the game has to fit within a Mint Tin. Um, and, it, you know, there's other parameters. It has to play under a certain amount of time. has to fit within a certain price parameter. Um, but I I really wanted to... So I play medium heavy weight games. That's what I'm into. I love... Uh, deep, deep games with meaningful decisions, uh, very low to, to no luck. Um, 
And so I wanted to create an experience like that mm -hmm. in a, a tiny little mint tin. Okay. So that's what I set out to do, and, and I feel like uh, for the most part, I, I have achieved that with the design. It, it's called Mintrospection. Okay. Kind of a mouthful. Uh, I'm open to changing the name. But I went off of the, the mint tin thing. Uh, the original name was Introspection. And I was like, oh, I could just make this kind of witty. Mint, mint, yeah, whatever. It's okay. kind of lame. It's actually lame. <laughs> but I'm I like it. I'm, but... I'm rolling okay. with it. Uh, the theme of the game is that you are playing as a philosophy or a, a train of thought, a certain way of thinking, and it's an area control game at its heart, and you are trying to gain dominance in a human mind. And so you it's got a little, little card drafting, uh, some action selection, area control. Um, I every, every designer thinks that their game is fun. Right. That's mm -hmm. just if they didn't, then like, why are you even doing it? Right. It's and so I think it's your idea. Fun. Every game um, you create, you think is the greatest game. Ex exactly. It's the greatest. It's going to be the next the Catan. I, I think it's not going to be. Well, it's part. Um, it's part of confidence. I mean, you need to have confidence in yeah. what you're doing. The other part exactly. is actually putting your games so other people can buy them. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. So, um, but so me and John, one of the other guys in our group, we get together twice a week before work. Uh, every week to work on designs. Okay. He's uh, he kind of came on as a developer for this design, but once we're finished with this, uh, we're basically just going to be co-designing. Um, and I love that process. I love working with other people. Collab um, collaborating. Yeah, my ideas are are okay, but when when I can join forces with other people, that's when those ideas I think really shine. So yeah, this this design's really cool. I don't know how well it's going to do in the contest. Um, it it maybe falls a little bit outside of the the spirit of the contest simply because um they're they're looking for a, a quick kind of lighter game fits in a mint tin mm -hmm. i was like what can i cram into this tiny little tin both, I, there's nothing wrong with that no and, and both in terms of depth and complexity but also components so it may it may not be exactly what the judges are looking for, but I, I still think it's a good game. And well, are you familiar with the Tiny Epic games? I am. Okay. Yep. yep. Well, then they have the Ultra Tiny. There's nothing wrong no. with having a depthful game in a small little tin. And that's I, I just I like to create games that people with similar tastes to me would enjoy. You know, I can design outside of that, but that's really what I. So like regardless of how well you do in this contest, are you going to release this game? Definitely. Yep. All right. But I'm open to... Now, after uh, I get a copy, I need you to close it. Yeah. So Eknum does not buy a copy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, yeah. Um, don't worry, I'll buy two. <laughs> but I, you know, I I don't know if, if this is going to be self-published. Like, I don't know if it's just going to stay on the Game Crafter. If it, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to whatever. Right. If, if there were publishers that I thought... Uh, it would fit in their their lineup and, and in their wheelhouse. Um, I would love to pitch it. Well, have you ever thought about maybe having your games at like your local game store? Like Derek, uh, yep. he had brought his uh, Euryphorus down to one of the local game stores here and, and sold out his entire inventory. That's awesome. You know, it, it seems like a lot of people really um, that the community they really back that. Yep. So you might. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Once once the contest is you know over, mm -hmm. um, we'll probably do some of that. It'd be you know, awesome if you won. Because what, what's the yeah. what's the winner get? Uh, so there's like a cash prize. Um, there's like some game crafter credit prize. You you get a lot of publicity through the game crafter if you, if you win a contest. Uh, but there's also two different uh, publishers, small publishers, that are looking to sign a game or two uh, from the contest. All right. Um, the winner obviously will be the most likely to to get one of those uh, contracts, but they're they're open to any of the games that are submitted. So they're they're going to go through and weed through all of the designs that are submitted, and uh, possibly pick a, a couple of them to publish. So and how do people vote on this, or is this not? Yeah. So the first the first phase of the contest is a community vote. So to, to do that, I believe you have to make an account on the mm -hmm. Game Crafter, um, and then you can, you can go on and, and vote. 
And it's free to make an account. I, it's free to make I, an I've account. I've made an account. So. Um, it's interesting, though. It costs... There's kind of like a currency that isn't... It's not necessarily like a monetary currency, but kind of like geek gold. It's almost. points. It's, when yeah. you buy something, you get points. It's, yeah. When you create something, you get points. Exactly, yep. yeah. So I, I think it may cost some of the point currency to, to, to actually to, to do a vote to do a vote okay so the, the the community vote really is people that are on the game crafter right. that have either bought from there use it for their services so for whatever. the for the community that is on game crafter when is the voting uh well the contest ends the 28th of october okay so about a month from now um and then i believe they start the community vote like the day after okay um and it usually think it runs you know a week or a couple weeks and then they close that down and have semi-finalists and then and then it goes to judge votes all right and, and then, then for all listeners what was your game called again mintrospection all right thank you that's cool yeah yeah, yeah it's fun I'm so excited. everyone vote for that yeah 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 if you're on the game crafter i mean just just check out all the designs there's right gonna... now it's the best game out there <laughs> there's there's gonna be it is a... the next Catan, people. <laughs> There's there's gonna be a lot of really great designs I think for this contest so and if you don't like Catan it's better than Catan. Yep. Yep. Yeah yeah and depending on your taste you you may very well think that it is better than Catan. Yeah. So. Like me I'm not a big Catan fan. Yeah. I I think unless that, it's Star Trek Catan and then yeah. it doesn't matter. I think I think Catan has done so much for modern board games um, and and modern board gaming as a, a hobby. Um, you have to give it its its props I, for what it is. I don't is mind doing. it. It's yep. just it can get a little slow. Sure. And that's the only way to play Catan is with some of the expansions. It's the only way to play it. Yeah. And there's quite a few of those. Yes. There's no shortage of Catan expansions, that's for sure. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. Just like if I had options to play something else, I'd probably play something else. But uh, like I said, you you have to give it props for, for what it has done. So many people have gotten introduced to, to modern board games through Catan. It's still so, a solid game. It is, it's yeah. Still a solid it's it is it is great for what it is and and because of the number of sales you cannot that is a fact. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's just I, you know when, when there's such a variety of games out there right now. Yeah. Catan, the basic Catan is a pretty um, simplistic Sure. It could be bland after a while because of yeah. I think it is Same one of those games that just it is one of those breakout games yes. that yep. kind of got people into the hobby and has made the hobby what it is. Yeah. But it's still a solid game. It Although, is. Although, like yep. I said, the only way I really enjoy playing the game now is with some of the insp- with some of the expansions. Yeah, it it just makes it it gives it more depth. But and it is you, a good game to just get yes. someone that is not into gaming into it by just. Here's this. This is something completely different that you're yes. you're not used to. It's not yes. a monopoly. It's not a life. Not a it's just yes. a. It's a very. It's it's a hobby game. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Just like so. uh, Kyle's games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. so you your convention now. What are some of the you have a media list? Or what, yeah. What, yeah. What you so, like to go through? so like as I was saying, I I uh, just have a lot going on in terms of the gaming. Uh, hobby um, so I started a blog this last year that's one of the other uh, new developments in my life uh, in terms of, of my hobby um, hexandcube.com so okay. hex and cube.com um, you know we're, we're doing some of the traditional things that board game bloggers do we're, we have some game reviews um, some top numbered lists things like that but um, we're, I'm really trying to bring my personality to the the board game blogging world. You know, everybody has their own flavor that they bring when they are a, a content creator. You know, um, and and usually people gravitate towards the people that they most align with. You know, that they their tastes most align, or um, you know, like the shut up and sit down guys, like. I really appreciate their reviews. I think they do really good reviews, but that's not necessarily why I listen to them. Right. Um, I don't always agree with their taste. Like my tastes don't always align with theirs. You had actually uh, released a list of five I podcasts did. that you listened to. Yep. Yep. We I were did. on that. Yeah. 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 Um, 
But I listen to those guys mostly for, like, the entertainment factor. Right. They're well, that's what I listen to podcasts for. Sure. If it doesn't entertain me and doesn't yeah. make me laugh, then why am I listening? Sure, yeah, exactly. I can listen to podcast news any day. Yeah. <laughs> or or uh, board game news. I can read it, see yep. it on the YouTube, whatever. Yep. I, I listen to a podcast because it's I want to be entertained. Exactly. So, like, the Shut Up and Sit Down guys are just hilarious. Uh, and I, I love... So, I, I really want to... I just want to bring my personality. Um, so, like... You know, even within my reviews, like, if you don't know me, you might not get the humor straight off because I, I'm kind of a dry, like, very sarcastic. That's the yep. kind of sense of humor that I have. Oh, just shut up and sit down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's getting salty. Over I don't here. know if you're just talking about titles or if yeah. you're just telling him to shut up and sit down. <laughs> well, I'm already sitting down, so that makes it easier. Okay. But um, shut up. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, no, I just... <laughs> Sorry. The rest of the podcast Sorry. is just silence. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, we're doing, I, I, like, one of the segments that I do is, like, uh, my all-star game group. Okay. So I basically take uh, a certain kind of game or a, a particular game, and I make a list of if I could play with anybody throughout all of history, who would I want to play with? And Eknum has his hand up. And it, it <laughs> you know, it ranges from, like, Newton to Denzel Washington, you know, like weird. You weren't on the list. That I, well, no, it middle. ranges. He's oh, in the oh, he's in, the in there. He's in the. He's on the spectrum. <laughs> although, although Newton, I think, would be dry and boring, but that's fine. <laughs> well, it's funny. I I decided to put him on a list of uh, people I would want to play a competitive dexterity game oh, against. Yes, he'd probably be, as I a mean, master. His intelligence of, would be out as there, a master so, yes. of physics. I wanted yes. to see if if his knowledge of physics would translate into actually I, controlling something. What's one it. of the games you'd play with him? Ooh, that you would play with him. Croconole. Wow. Wow. Or just, it, I would love to see how he would tackle the classic Jenga. Just to see, could he, like, do something, you know, supernatural? Yeah, like... Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And then Denzel. <laughs> yeah, what did... I think I actually had him in my RPG group. Oh, okay. I would want to, because I, I, I just love him as an actor. Um, I love, like, most of his movies, and I, I feel like he would play a good, uh, well, he could play either. He could play either the heroine or more of the treacherous. And you would like these actors that you feel so, um, that you, you think do such a wonderful job. You'd like their personalities outside of their work I'd to be similar to what they are at work. I and it's funny because some of the people that I put into these lists, like, I choose a, a character that they have played in a movie or, or in a See, show. See, I would take Bruce Willis and I would play oh. the Die Hard Knock <laughs> Plaza game. Only that, I would make him play Hans Gruber. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's great. That's the kind of stuff, like, I just want people, when they, when they come on the site, um, I want it to be informative and educational. Like, I want them to know that I'm not just a funny guy. But I, I'm also analytical. I'm also critical. Um, I also, you know, I, I know what I'm talking about. Um, but I want I want people to laugh. I want, I want people to come on and, and be entertained and have a good time while they're reading through the material. Um, and so that's that's one uh, aspect. Uh, but then I'm also just very active on social media, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, Kyle underscore dude roll on Twitter, um, Instagram Kyle underscore hex and cube, uh, and then I recently just got on Facebook. I was absent from Facebook. I haven't had one I think since I was like in, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's on Facebook? Uh, honestly, that I think that might be the question in another five to ten years, just because of how those things work. Um, but yeah, you you can find me on Facebook. I actually just created a, a group that I'm going to try and get going uh, called the Indie Coalition. Um, and I, my goal is just to get indie designers together to uh, collaborate, maybe do some co-designing, just be able to bounce ideas off of each other. Um, I'm glad you so clarified yeah. that because when you first said Indie Coalition, I thought maybe this was some kind of a thing against our government yeah we're what? actually we're actually creating a militia that's that's what we're we're not doing that uh wow average joe's if, has got shut down yeah if if anyone from the government is listening yeah. we are not that's it's a joke we're, we're joking have a, have a sense of humor. We're, we're joking yeah i mean that's why they're behind you with a black bag yeah, i know i know 
There's going to be a van waiting outside. Yep. Uh, uh, Kyle's never leaving the game room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can live so. with you, right? And then we also we also have uh, our our gaming group in the area. If you're if you're anywhere, any listeners that are anywhere in the northwest Iowa vicinity, um, Lakes Area Board Gamers is our our group, and we have a, a Facebook presence. But we we get together and have kind of a larger group meet up on the first Saturday of of every month. Do you have a Facebook group? We do. Okay. Yep. Yep. If you just search Lakes Area Board Gamers, mm-hmm. you'll you'll find us on Facebook. Okay. And it says on there where you have this at. Yep. So has. you create events every once in a while when you yep. do that stuff. Yep. It's awesome. We, yep. First Saturday of every month we meet at uh, Game State in Spencer, Iowa, and uh, it's good. It's a good time. A lot of good people. A lot of good games. So, so yeah, I'm busy. Eknum, are you going to uh, join that Facebook group? My Facebook page is gonna be right on it. I was okay. just gonna say he's got to he's got to create a Facebook page first. Yes, and we'll, we'll get on that. So this <laughs> will be a black silhouette. Well, <laughs> I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that's never gonna happen. Don't be afraid. Right. But I can always do it through my wife's. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Now we're you know. On, we're also on BGG, and I know you're. I think you're on there, right? Yeah, he's on BGG. Yep. Yep. Right. Most of his collection is. So yeah, it's a little bit short. Yeah. It hasn't been updated for a while. <laughs> you better get on that. And considering what the last three weeks, I got like five hundred games. No, 40, 45 games within the last. Three That's weeks. close. Wow. That's close. It's impressive. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. So yeah, our our game group is on on BGG. You can. Just search for Lake Area Board Gamers. We have a group on there, but and then I'm also personally on BGG. Are you I'm, on Instagram at all? I know uh, you said Twitter, Facebook, BGG. Yep, I'm I'm personally on Instagram. Okay. Yep, uh, Kyle underscore uh, Hex and Cube. Um, most of the most of the social media stuff, I really am focusing on board gaming. So like, if you're interested at all in what I'm up to in in that realm, uh, come you know follow me. Send me a message. Honestly, that's like I just want to connect with people. That's yep. that's why I do it. Is I just want to get to know people. You know, if you if you want to talk about games, we'll talk about games. If you want to talk about something else, let's talk about something else. And then you also have a YouTube channel, or are you, you not know, active with that? Yeah. So that was that was I started that a little bit prematurely, I think, um, simply because I, I wasn't at a place where I had the time to invest in it. YouTube is a different animal. Yeah. Um, it it takes a lot of time and effort and editing just editing <laughs> you know there's just and and all of these different content sources all take a lot of work right. um but that was just an area where at that time i was a little bit out of my depths so i i haven't been keeping up with that and the small guys like us we film it we organize it. We edit it. We yep. do all of it ourselves. Where a lot of these big guys, as studio studio quality, they basically just do the video, and then you've got someone else that does the sound they and the editing, and you yep. know they do the filming. Whereas all they have to do is sit in front of the camera, yep. know their stuff, and half the time, I'm sure it's probably on cue cards. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's it's a lot of work. It's hard getting into it when um, you're when you're doing it yourself. Exactly. All your own resources. Yes. Yep. 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 And you know, like I, I have a family. I have a, a wife and, and three children. And Which you just had another yeah, child. Yeah, we just, not yeah, too we long just ago. had Atlas. Atlas Nehemiah, he's six months old. Um, awesome, awesome little dude. Yeah, he's yeah. Weight of the world on his shoulders so he, already. Yeah. So the name is really cool. So Nehemiah means uh, the compassion of God, and Atlas obviously is the the Titan that carry. He was punished by having to carry the world on his shoulders. And so our, our meaning behind the name was that uh, we hope that our son doesn't have the weight of the world, but instead carries compassion, that he, he's a compassionate person. That's cool. That's very unique. So, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But he's awesome. Uh, we're, we love, I mean, I, I, yeah, love and family life. So now I'm curious, what are the other two names? Uh, so our daughter, who's four, is Glory Grace. And our son, who is uh, going to be three soon, his name is Pascal Joshua. Wow. So, yeah, we, we, we care. I don't know. We care about names. In a lot of other cultures, uh, names are almost, like, prophetic in a way. Like, names, the meaning attached to those names was very important. 
and so we we kind of attach ourselves to that and think that names are are important and so we spend some time thinking about right you know not just what sounds cool but what the meaning is behind the behind the name yes i know with my six kids it was always a compromise so sure. was, whether i wanted it or not yeah, yeah yeah it was really what was approved by mom since Dude, it, she kind of had a majority of what had happened with having the child it's, so yeah it's, it's so, like dad has a little bit of say but ultimately none i come up with like a list of these names and i'm like babe these names like the meanings to these names are phenomenal we should use them and she'll read them through and go these all sound horrible <laughs> <laughs> like the, and so we have to you know it takes a while it's a process yeah it is you, know? you come up with like 15 and she likes none of them yeah 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 so so yeah. I'm, I'm i'm thankful that we got atlas and and pascal through because originally she wasn't too fond of of either of those so we got it though we got it through that's awesome accomplished when you say we got it through you mean me you i i accomplished my my goal yeah yeah well i mean yes i'm sure there was more to it than that there oh yeah yeah but yeah so i mean you know i'm 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 busy with family life and then and how long you um, been married uh we're going on 10 years so we got we got married uh, young, uh, which we we don't regret at all. Um, we we always tell you know younger couples or whatever uh, when they ask us about getting married young, like just just be ready. If you're ready when you're young, getting married young is awesome. If you're not, and it, don't. It involves work. I mean, oh, marriage doesn't sure. come easy. It's. It, it, is, it is work. It is probably the most difficult thing. Unless you're Eknum, apparently, then it comes just naturally. <laughs> when you take, when you take. Don't two... worry, you're gonna get beaten later. <laughs> yes, I, yes, yes. <laughs> no, it's it's. Please it's edit this out. <laughs> so yeah, it's good, but I just I have to stay busy, so that's why I have so much going on. Yeah, you so. seem like you you're you're just kind of bouncing off the walls sometimes with your ideas yeah so i've uh i've decided that i'm just gonna because you know i'm into other stuff i love to play music i play guitar and drums and bass guitar wow um i i love to read and i I love to you know just there's lots of lots of things that i like to do um but i've kind of really focused on board gaming as we only have so much time to give to things in the world and the nerd comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering what you had in your hand there. Yeah. I'm just, oh I'm wait, just saying wait. That, well, there's a lot of things in life, and a lot of things are important in life. They are, yeah. And sometimes that that nerdy part has a tendency to squeal its way out and say, "But it's me." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, like I said, I just I, I've always been a, a creative person. I just like to create, and I feel e- like Eknum's words, nerd. It, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm not, no, there's not. First of all, this is not necessarily. There's other people that feel that board gaming and and, and sci-fi stuff and, and yeah. all this stuff is nerdy. But it's a. But there's a certain passion. There is. And, and it's that passion. You could put nerdiness on anybody's hobby. Yep. Anybody's hobby could be nerdy to someone else. Yeah. But it's it's the passion that you have for something, and it's the desire to do the best you can with what you what you have, and exactly. to know that you really like this so much that you want to put emphasis on it. Exactly. I don't think that makes you. I don't think it's necessarily nerdy. I'm just using the word. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. using the word. I don't nerdy. think nerdy is derogatory anymore. No, I think that's it is, a thing of the is, past. I, I think I think nerdiness is just something to show passion. It yeah. really is. Yeah. It's it's my my. So I'm nerdy about this. Yeah. Tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is what I enjoy. No. If you don't like it, yeah. <laughs> then go enjoy your fishing or go enjoy your hunting. And I'm nothing. There's nothing against fishing and hunting either. But when you really think about it, the people who hunt all the time, they're nerds about hunting. They are. Yeah. The people who fish are nerds about fishing. And you think about how much they spend on their hobby. And that's Eknum, and you can find him in Sioux <laughs> Falls. <laughs> and, and you think how much they spend on their hobby. Well. Board game is the same way. You can spend a lot on this hobby or you, or not. Yeah, but hunting, that's a manly sport. Yeah. You're playing board games. You're a nerd. If, well, <laughs> w- hunting will, will, yes. I hate <laughs> coordination and everything else. <laughs> board gaming, I'm trying to utilize my brain and, 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 and to keep it functioning longer so I don't 
have Alzheimer's. Oh, you and I you want to function longer? Yes. I want to go hunting? I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, 150 years old. Wow, 150. Yeah. You know, with modern technology, yes, you could probably hit that. Yeah, I could yeah. probably hit that. Nothing wrong with a brain might, in a jar playing I might, games. Yes, I, I might have to have somebody else move the pieces for me. Yeah. But. You're going to end up being the, uh, what was his name, uh, from the Ninja Turtles. Oh, the, Krang? The, Krang, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what we're talking about? No, I have no idea. That's yeah. all right. That's okay. We're yeah. nerds. Yeah, we're nerds. <laughs> but I agree with you that, like, I just am passionate about about board games and uh, I don't I only have so much time in my life to dedicate to a, a craft or a hobby and I've decided that this is this is what I want to dedicate it to so I'm just I put, get that I'm, yeah exactly <laughs> I'm just putting all my eggs in one basket yep um, and so I do you know I get to do a little bit of writing within that I, I, I get to do a little bit of you know the, the on the design side um, well you are a designer little, though that's part of what your job is exactly yep so this a lot of this stuff within this hobby incorporates a lot of things you said you enjoy reading. Well, reading is, is and writing kind of goes simultaneously together. It does. So, and with the design part of it, you're use, incorporating a lot of the stuff that you are good at. Yeah. Incorporating it into something that you enjoy doing along with playing the games. Yeah. But in designing the games and making new... And that other people can enjoy. Yes. That's, I mean, that's where, like, that's where... A, kind of the satisfaction. I love the process as well, but getting to, to take something that you've created, whether it be a, a game design or even a you know a blog post or, or something like that, and someone else can enjoy that and can like find something beneficial for them in that, that's so rewarding. Bringing this baby into the world and, and then sending the baby out and watch it mature. To play board games! <laughs> to play... <laughs> Is a circle, and my kids actually love <laughs> board games already. So, so that's good. That's awesome. What is to, so? What is uh, just a couple of their favorite board games? Yeah, so we they love Dragon's Breath, and that's a Haba game. That's a Haba game. I think I we mean, played that down there. That's with the oh, rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They love they love that game. Um, they also love Rhino Hero. Oh, yep. So that's ha- the all the Haba cards, games. right? Yeah. It's, okay. Dude, Rhino Hero is so cool. I actually, it's a. It's made for children, but... Whoa, 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 whoa. It says to age 99. It does. That's true. No, that's true. That's a fair point. <laughs> and we that are all children. We, we are, are yeah, all yeah. children. Yeah, yeah. We're but at that's different what I, stages, but we're all that, children. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Some it's more like, than it others. Is, it is such a fun <laughs> game. It's like it's like reverse Jenga with cards. And it's it's phenomenal. It's a great game. So We so had yeah. it out. We didn't have a chance to play it last year. Nice. Well, so, this year. Maybe next, Yes. This this coming year, yeah, yes, so. January. Um, <laughs> what was the dates on that again? Yeah, uh, I th- the fourth and fifth. Fourth and fifth of January, yeah. two two thousand twenty. Two thousand twenty. Uh, Eknum, you, you going to that? <laughs> in spirit. Well, you might make it to part in, of it. In spirit, I am going to it in spirit. I'm, I'm going to be behind you guys 100%. You're going to a wedding. So but I think I'm what you should do. I'm going to my son's wedding, which is very important to me. It's my youngest son. He's getting married, and it's very important to me. I think you go up there. You say, do you? Do you? Okay, let's go to the board game convention. <laughs> Break. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. We, we yeah. could just Skype in. And, like, Hey, I could do that. You could come to the convention. Through Skype, and then I no, could put you the could computer. Phys- you, you, could, could, you could physically come to the convention oh, and, and Skype, Skype the, the wedding. wedding. I was thinking. Yeah, going, I mean, priorities. I was thinking of going to the wedding <laughs> and then putting have a computer there. I could actually play games with someone else with the Skype there and say, move that piece over here. We'll that put seems a, like a lot more work. We'll put a laptop on a little cart and just have people push you around to different tables. Hi, this is Eknam. All right, so convention, January... Fourth and fifth. Fourth and fifth. Yeah. That is yeah. the weekend after uh, New Year's. Yep. Yeah. And uh, tickets are on sale at lakesareagamefest.com. Okay. And uh, early bird is uh, 25 for yeah. the weekend. Yep. Yeah. And then the week of the convention, is yeah. that correct? Yep. Yeah. The week of it, it jumps about 10 bucks. Okay. Yep. And I did that last year, which is really not that bad for a convention. Uh, early bird was the it was the same price last year, right? Twenty five. I think we raised it five dollars. Okay, so something it was like that. 
Yeah, and my daughter decided last minute that she was going to go with, so we ended up buying a ticket, and that was awesome. Yep. Because it was still on sale, so... And we do actually, because we want it to be more of a family-friendly event, um, eight and under are free. Right. Um, so you know, And that's nice to have, because, yeah, I mean, yeah. with, with having a family of six... <laughs> yep. If, you know... If half your family members are under yeah. age eight, that saves you a lot of money. It does, so. and uh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, we we all you're not under eight. I can't take you with for free by a few decades. Whoa, <laughs> several. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a good time. We're well, really excited. I really think you should have underrated over a certain age for free. Oh, a senior <laughs> discount. There you go. A senior discount? Do you qualify for that? Yeah. Because you're old? <laughs> <laughs> er? <laughs> then the dinosaurs? <laughs> Ooh, wow. Oh, Some dinosaurs. I mean, come on. They're my pets or my pets. <laughs> yeah, they died, but you lived yeah. on. <laughs> you forgot to feed them. Uh, so is there anything else you'd like to add? Man, I, I don't think so. Just uh, any listeners that want to connect, I'd love to, I'd love to connect with them. All right. Find you me on... you have your board game meetups, which is on Facebook. You can find that yeah. at Lakes Area Board Gamers. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then your convention. Yeah. And Hex your and blog. Hexandcube.com. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think of the content that's on there. If you have any suggestions on how to make it better, um, please leave those as well. It's got it's got a little bit of my design stuff on there, some of my design process, um, some funny articles, some uh, critical articles, some reviews. So lots of good stuff on there. All right. I just like to say, you know, anybody can make the convention go to it. They're, the group of guys putting it on are awesome. They just you're treated like family. Mm. Um, I think the whole weekend is it, it is is it's like an outing with the family, but a good family, <laughs> a good family. Not if you have a family that's that's not with your real in, family, in, but like the family uh, you wanted. Yes, <laughs> not with a conflicted family, but a family that is that is generally um, just wholesome and, and they enjoy being with you and talking with you. Heck, it's been a pleasure. If I never see you again. I'll understand. Okay. I'll look for you in the backyard. All right. <laughs> we really appreciate that, though. Heck, I'm seriously. And that's, and that's what we're shooting for, so it's cool that that was the experience. It is a very so. inviting uh, convention that you guys throw on, so it's... Good. I like it. Awesome. I'll be back every year, so... Cool. And I will try to be back in future years. I know my and, oldest and daughter says she's coming this year, so... Awesome. I, I am generally, and I said this to you guys earlier, I'm, I'm generally... Sad they're not able to come. Yeah. But I'm happy that you're still having it, which is which is great. That you're still as much zeal coming out of you guys that was before. That's awesome. So keep it up. Cool. Keep it up. Thank you. It's great. There's zeal coming out of him. Yes. Is it contagious? Yeah. There's there's antibiotics. I think Ho- that can. Ho- hopefully, oh. it is contagious for more people to get that same zeal for board gaming because it is an awesome. Um, pastime, awesome hobby. It, it it gets people closer together. You yeah. get away from the tube. Yep. You get away from the media. Come on. And you get personalized. Well, unless you watch how to play videos. <laughs> yes, but I'm just saying this Which gives you more. Per, this gets you more personalized, and um, just you get to know people. Yeah. You get to know new people. Yeah. You get to get new friendships, um, friendships you never knew existed that are possibility. Mm. It gets gets you out of the house. And I think that that is awesome. It is. It really is. And you get to meet cool people like Kyle, Kyle and I, Joe and I, John. Yes. And uh, what was the other one's name? Mike. Joel. Mike. Mike and Joel. Yep. So there's a Joe and a Joel. <laughs> they're they're actually brother in laws as well. Wow. So it's. Yeah, the whole group is it's just very awesome. confusing. So there is five of you guys. <laughs> there are. Wow. Yep. yep. You're like the Power Rangers. We are. Okay. I would want to be Zach. They're not the I Power could. Rangers, but the Power Gamers. Oh, hey, oh. <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> so you'd want to be Zach. So yeah. that's a Black Ranger, yep. if I remember right. Yep. 
because he he was like the dancer of the group. Yeah, that's that's me. Billy now is the nerdiest. Into so the nerdy stuff. Uh, out of okay, let's let's do this. So okay, so Zach is you. Yeah, yeah. Let's run down who your other other this, members are. Yeah, this is good. This is gonna be tough because so, one of them is gonna have to be Kimberly, and I don't know which one will be most offended by that if they're offended at all. Oh, you just go with whoever's gonna be the most offended is gonna be Kimberly. Sure, sure. Because she would be offended by that. And not. But she's a Power Ranger, so be, that makes her tough and she could take it it won't be offensive like it, uh, all right I'll, I'll try and do it so <laughs> i think that joel well you've always got tommy too true so you only have to offend one okay okay <laughs> so this will be funny john no joel would be billy joe would be jason the leader, the, the Red le- Ranger. The leader. I, that we'll, we'll say Joe is, is Jason. Um, I would be Zach, self-proclaimed, so I don't know if that counts. Um, we'll say that John is Trini for lack of options. <laughs> and Mike... There's always Alpha, I mean, come Mike, on. Yeah, Mike is Kimberly. <laughs> And nobody is Tommy. Wow. Right here. I, uh, actually, I think he's Zordon. There you go. The big I, I don't know anything about You look Rangers. like a giant floating head. I, I, I don't know Power Rangers. <laughs> new generation, new stuff. Power Rangers have been around Not since I was a kid. Yeah, but I'm older than you. Oh, by a few decades, <laughs> according to Kyle. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Uh, Power Rangers would have been my my children's thing, not mine. All right. So what is your thing? I don't have a thing. Okay. So if uh, your game members were Hogan's Heroes crew members. Ooh, Hogan's (laughs) Heroes. Actually a show that I grew up with. Yes. I honestly have no idea what that is. Oh, man. Or the Rat Patrol. Or, or, yes. Hogan's Heroes is a great show. I miss that one. Bob Crane. Andy Griffith show. Oh, there we oh, go. Andy okay. Griffith, yeah. I love the Andy Griffith show. Andy Taylor, Andy Griffith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huffman's always yep. want to call it. Yeah. Maybe RFD. There was, there was, wow, there was a lot of them in that that came off and stretched off. See, now we're starting to get our Gomer listeners Pyle, interested, the Gomer, ones that are a few decades Gomer, old. There we Pyle, go. Gomer Pyle came yeah. out of that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's just like, yeah, that was, that was actually a, a uh, blast from the past. Yeah. Do, you do your best, Gomer Pyle. <laughs> I can't even think of how Gomer Pyle. I know. I was trying to think. Go, holy Jesus. You know, I can't. I think that was Goofy. No. That was Goofy. I'm pretty sure Gomer just had a baby with Goofy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he used to say golly. He used to go. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. He did. You're right. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. All right. So is there anything else you want to add about the upcoming event? Come hang out with us. That's what we want. It is a pretty cool event. If you're able to come, come come hang out. It's going to be a good time. And that is 24 hours of gaming. Yeah. Yeah, we go pretty late uh, into Sunday morning, coming off of Saturday, and then we we get up and hang out for the rest Lodging. of the day. Lodging. You said if you oh. call down. Yeah, so that, yeah, good good point. So if, if you're traveling from any distance at all, or you just want to stay at the resort, um, we have, block, we have a, a block of rooms that are... Uh, cheaper than the normal rate. I don't know the exact number. I can't remember what it what it is, but it's it's cheaper than than uh, what you would have to pay normally. And it's it literally you just you come out of your room and walk down the hall and you're there. And you just say I'm part of the Lake Area Convention. Yep, the Lake Area Game Fest. And they'll Fest. give you that discount. Yep, and they give you that discount. Really simple. So. And then there's a restaurant in yeah. the the hotel, which is uh, Minerva's. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, it's a you know it's a great restaurant right there, and then there's a little pool area um, with some some kids play stuff. And there's a McDonald's right down the street, I believe. And there's lots of restaurants so in that area. It's very close 
it's a convention. it's a touristy area, so it there's lots of stuff to lots of food and. I believe there's a lake somewhere around there. A couple. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> touristy area, which this is in the non-tourist time, so it actually gives you another reason to go. Yeah. So yep. I mean, if you want to go to the lake, go swimming. Yep. January, no problem. <laughs> you, you just gotta break, break a hole in the ice. Your ice you chip yep. and yep. then. I'm yeah, pretty sure there'd be maybe, not many people out maybe there. Maybe tie yourself to a line if you're going to do that. Yeah, so that you don't we could do a we could do an impromptu polar plunge. Yeah. Whoa! There we go. Yeah, that's. Does that free up some time for you, Echo? No, it actually <laughs> does not. Oh. No, no, it does not. I'm not really into cold. You're crushing cold, hopes and dreams cold, right now. Either am I. Cold. I don't know why I we can, live in the Midwest. I can I can endure the no, cold, but not cold. that. I'm not crazy about cold water in the winter. I'm good. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. So or polar ice guy, yeah. No, that's it. That's all. All right. Thanks for uh thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Appreciate it. Always always a joy to see you, Kyle. It really is. Um, Likewise. Good stuff. You guys want to hug it out right now? Come here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> All right, that's it for us tonight. I'm Joe. I'm Kyle. Actum says goodbye. The Lakes Area Game Fest is put on by the Lakes Area Board Gamers and is hosted in Okaboji, Iowa at the Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Tickets are available now for purchase on tabletopevents.com slash conventions slash Lakes Area Game Fest 2020. Or you can do a Google search for Lakes Area Game Fest. The cost for the early bird ticket is $25 for the full weekend, $20 for Saturday only, and $15 for Sunday. Or on site is $35 for the full weekend, $25 for Saturday only, and $20 for Sunday only. There is lodging available. Contact the resort and tell them you are part of the convention and you can have a discounted room. There is food available at Minerva's, which is attached to the resort as well. There will also be merchandise available, such as t-shirts for sale for $15. Shirts must be ordered before December 1st to guarantee a size and availability. Your shirt will be waiting for you with your badge at check-ins. Visit the merchandise page for more information. Remember, a portion of each purchase goes to help those in need. So they are donating a portion of their profits to local charities. You have power. The power to save lives. The power to defeat illnesses. The power to use games for good. You can be a hero for local sick and injured kids through Extra Life, a 24-hour gaming marathon that supports a local Children's Miracle Network hospital in your community. Join 50,000 gamers from all across the world as we battle the enemy illnesses and injuries facing local kids. Play games! Heal kids! Find out more at extra-life.org. Thank you for listening. Please follow us on these formats. Find us at Facebook at Average Joe's Gaming Podcast. Join our Facebook group of Average Joe's Gaming. Follow us at Instagram at Average Joe's Gaming Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Hammerly Joseph. Find us on Reddit at Average Joe's Gaming. You can join our Board Game Geek Guild at Average Joe's Gaming. You can go to our website AverageJoe'sGamingPodcast.com and find all of our information. Check out our Extra Life tab and feel free to join our Extra Life team by clicking on the Extra Life logo which will take you to our team page. You can also listen to us on any of your favorite podcasting devices such as Google Play Music, Amazon Alexa, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Thanks again for listening. We appreciate all of your feedback. If you wish to get into contact with us, you can go to our website at AverageJoe'sGamingPodcast.com and go to the Contact Us link, or you can just email us directly at 
Average Joe's Gaming Podcast at Outlook.com. You can also message us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Thanks again for listening.